G'day, it's Robbie again. Okay, so you bought yourself a lathe. And it could be a Chinese lathe like this, or it could be some old clunker, or who knows what. But, one thing's for sure, it's going to have a chuck. We would hope so. Okay, the scroll chuck. Three jaw scroll chuck. Nothing really magical and mystical about that. Most of the times you get by with that without too much trouble. But what if you've got a full jaw chuck like one of these? I mean, you are the man, you know, you've got the lathe and now you've got the four jaw chuck. I mean, wow, you've got to be the coolest dude in the whole bloody neighbourhood. But then, of course, to use this, you've got to set it up. You've got to put your stock in there and then you've got to adjust everything so it's nice and symmetrical. How do you do it? Well, then you've got to be extra cool dude and get yourself some measuring equipment. So, what do you buy? Well, let's have a look. You can have a dial indicator like this. Or you can have a wimpy little test indicator like this. Now, when you start off, you know, hey, look at this stuff. It's all very impressive. And if you do what I did, you look at these and you go, wow, that's got to be better because it's, it's bigger than that one, you know, like, it's got to be twice as good. Dumb, dumb move, wrong thing. It's twice as big, which means it's going to be more difficult to get in close to the job. Direct acting, one direction only. This indicator, much smaller, can get into really confined areas. Won't fail the chuck like this wheel, the chuck jaws. Can do a multitude of reads in various positions. Okay, it's got shorter travel than this one. This one's got longer travel. But as you're just basically setting up work in a chuck, you don't need a mile of travel. So this would be perfectly adequate, it would be plenty. And I mean, when you look at them closely and use them, you'll see straight away that buying this is a mistake. You should be buying this because that will do a lot more than this can ever do. Let's have a look. A test indicator can do it all. You can do external. You can have the test indicator gauge on any angle. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you can adjust the probe to get the tip parallel to the measuring surface. So external on a circumference. There you can measure that. The plunger would have to come in at 90 degrees to the face to do that. Doesn't matter with this. And then, of course, the big thing that the plunger can't do is internal. What, just the tip of the ball touching? And there you go. You can do internal. And the fig figure you're going to get at is going to be spot on. So, test indicator is definitely the indicator to buy uh, if you want to do lathe work and you're not going to be doing big travel measurements like cam lift or piston stroke or things like that. These are meant for fine measurement, but they do it extremely well. Just a tad under 0.01 millimetres run out. 
Now this lathe is rated at 0.02, so it's under under the minimum specified run out. Not bad for a cheap Chinese lathe. You certainly would be battling to get within those sort of figures. Perfectly good enough for home, any man, hobby use. Okay, that's how you should measure the run out. Now let's look at how some people do it. How many times have you seen newbies do this? They've got a brand new lathe and they're all excited and eager to show you how good this thing is, particularly as it's Chinese, and wow, the run out is like non-existent. Well, this is why you never use a dial indicator for this sort of job. You always use a test indicator because the angle of that probe is all wrong and the error factor is going to be massive uh, from the angle and also from the binding that can occur in the dial gauge. So here's my collection. Now when I started off I bought this first. It's a Chinese dial indicator. No problem. Worked perfectly fine. Had years of use out of that. It didn't cost me more than about 20 bucks. Then down the track I've got some Michu Toyos. Got a couple of these this size. And I got a smaller one. Now, uh, as I said, these are okay for certain jobs, but they can't do what a test indicator can do. And over the years, I've had three. I start off with this one. It's a cheap Chinese test indicator that came with this stand. These are a really good little stand. These magnetic, getting close, excellent. These stands are big and clunky, and if you've got a small blade, they're going to be a bloody nuisance, I'll tell you right now. So what happened? Why have I got three? Well, I used this for years and it did a great job, and then one day it had an accident. It caught my sleeve on the probe, knocked it off the, off the, the lathe, and it crashed onto the ground. And from then on, it's never been quite the same. It's got some stiction in it, so I went the next step up. This was the cheapest. I went to the middle range, and this is Chinese. It's really good. Once again, I think I paid about 25 bucks for that, and it's a very, very good gauge. And having a slightly bigger dial makes it a little bit easier to read, but it's still not too big. It's perfect. And then down the track, I bought a second-hand uh, Japanese. Um, test indicator, beautiful thing. So, what am I suggesting? Well, what I'm suggesting is that if you can only afford one measuring device, definitely get a test indicator if you just want it for laid work. If you can afford the, the money, and it's not a lot of money, get yourself a cheap dial gauge. They're quite okay, and one day you might even use it. I just never use these, never ever open the drawer. I've got five of them, never see the light of day. These get used all the, all the time. Now, should I buy cheap or should I buy expensive? You know, like cheap is like, well, I don't know, $12. Expensive, like Michi Toyo is, that one's about 70 Is it... Uh, Three times as good. Well, no, it's not. They both they both measure quite quite okay for home use. You know, you won't see the difference. These are nice, beautifully made, and you know, I think they are. Well, obviously they're a higher quality unit, but for actual use, no, you're not going to see a big deal of difference. So, why do people buy these expensive ones? Well, they've either got a lot of money, or if you're running a business and you can depreciate, you can write off all this stuff, why would you buy cheap? You know, you'd buy the expensive one, write it off over 12 months or a couple of years, 
And then you could even, once you've done that, you could actually sell it <laughs> for half of what you paid for it or even maybe a third after years of use and basically cover your cost completely because when you depreciate, you don't depreciate in real terms the whole value. So what I'm saying is if you've got a lot of money, buy these. If you haven't got a lot of money, buy these. You'll be quite happy. And if you've got a business, you definitely buy this stuff. That's just the way it is. I've got a business. I know how this works. All right. So there you have it, guys. At the end of the day, buy one of each. You won't be disappointed. But when it comes to actually, actually using these gauges, once you've used one of these, you'll never use one of these again, quite frankly, in my personal opinion. So that's it from me. I hope that you got something out of that. Gives you an insight into it. Now, in my next video, I will be getting a Chinese test indicator from Banggood, but it's going to be the top of the range Chinese one that Banggood sell. So what I'm saying is Banggood sell a cheap one like that, a middle of the road one like that, and then they sell a top a top line one, which is the most expensive. And I've asked for the, for the most expensive. I don't expect it to be actually much more accurate or any more accurate than, say, that one. Even that one's quite okay. But the finish is definitely going to be better, I think. And, yeah, we'll see what you get for your money. But overall, I've never had an ounce of trouble um, prior to dropping them on the floor, of course, from from these gauges. They've been, these, these indicators have been perfectly okay for home use, okay? There you have it, guys. If you've got the choice, that's the one. But if you're a wealthy son of a bitch and you can afford two, get one of each. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.